This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 408, Three Important Life Lessons from the Avengers, part one, by John Romanello of romanfitnesssystems.com, and I'm your host and narrator, Dr. Neil. Hey there, happy Wednesday, and welcome back to Optimal Health Daily, where I read some of the best health and fitness blogs to you, usually with a little bit of commentary at the end. Now, just like the last couple of episodes, today's post is a bit on the longer side, so I'll read the first half today and then finish it up tomorrow. It's a bit more on the personal development side, like something you'd hear on Optimal Living Daily. And it's another one talking about the Avengers. We had one from Nerd Fitness a couple weeks back, also a two-part post. By the way, if you want to hear those, those are episodes 396 and 397. But as you know, with health and wellness, it's a lot about personal development. So I like reading these every now and then. Now today's post, of course, is very inspiring, but let's start it off with a little inspirational quote to get you in the right mindset. Too many people overvalue what they are not and undervalue what they are. Malcolm Forbes. And as you'll soon hear, I think that quote ties very nicely into today's topic. Now don't forget, before I get to today's post, I answer your questions every Friday. You can send one in at oldpodcast.com. What's great is if you do, makes me happy, and you'll be entered into very small special raffles to win books from us. All right, let's get right to today's post now and start optimizing your life. Three Important Life Lessons from the Avengers, Part 1, by John Romanello of romanfitnesssystems.com. Ah, the Avengers, the world's favorite superhero team. If ticket sales are any indication, we love them more than the X-Men, and we like them more than the Justice League. It's been a great ride for this group of heroes, and their blockbuster status is no different. If you're one of the few people who aren't really following along, Age of Ultron is the direct sequel to 2012's The Avengers and the 11th overall film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, a cohesive series of movies, TV shows, and digital shorts that tell individual parts of a larger story drawn from the pages of Marvel Comics. The Avengers are a group of superheroes who, despite their differences, work together towards a common purpose, usually saving the world or something like that. Anyway, I don't know why I'm bothering to explain the premise of the Avengers, because if by this point in time you haven't been at least peripherally exposed to 11 of the biggest blockbuster movies of all time, and you don't know about superhero team-ups, you're beyond my help. If you're not into this, I don't know how to talk to you. We're not friends. For the rest of you, let's get down to brass tacks and discuss some realness. So, the Avengers. What an awesome group of badasses, right? Right. But in addition to just loving them for their entertainment value and the way they inspire us to get jacked like a superhero, I believe they can teach us a few things. In fact, I think that looking at a movie about superhero teams can teach us a lot. Not just how to save the world while looking awesome in spandex, which is harder than it looks, and not just when it's appropriate to break out some snappy one-liners for high-level quippery, always, but some actual life lessons. The most important of these are about teams. Not just teamwork, but the value of teams themselves. Being part of a team and knowing how to be both part of a team and successful on a team is a fundamental skill that I think everyone needs to learn. One is better than one. The first thing you can learn from the Avengers is math. One is better than one, meaning that one team is better than one person. This is very different than saying five is better than one. Sure, a group of five individuals can probably accomplish more than just one person alone, but it is only once that group of five becomes one that you see the magic happen. When you're part of a team, a truly cohesive unit that functions with a single purpose, you can accomplish wonders. A single team can do more in a few days than one person can do in a month or a bunch of individuals can do in a week. The hard part is making those five into one. Being able to do this requires that all members put their respective egos aside and trust one another. For the Avengers, this is sometimes hard. Captain America and Iron Man, for example, have pretty different worldviews and compromise doesn't come easy but despite their disagreements, they respect and trust one another because they can see the value each brings to the table. When things get crazy and they really need to work together, they each fall into their roles seamlessly. If you're gonna be part of a truly successful team, you have to learn to let go of a lot of your general attitudes and preconceived notions. You just need to trust in the people around you and earn their trust as well. While it's certainly difficult, Actively setting aside ego is going to make you a better teammate, better employee, better boss, as well as a better parent, spouse, or friend. The abandonment of ego is what allows you to become part of a whole 
that is greater than the sum of its parts. This hasn't always been easy for me, and it's still a challenge. In fact, the only thing that's really helped me is to be constantly reminded that I don't know everything, and I can't do it all on my own. Trying and failing is part of it, but the larger piece of success has simply to become part of a number of teams and focus on playing one specific role rather than trying to do everything myself. Which brings us to lesson number two. Know your role and seek diversity. If you truly want to become successful, especially as part of a team, learning how to play a single role is important. This is something I learned many years ago, back when I was 12 and playing Dungeons and Dragons in my friend's basement. Much like the Avengers, D&D functions on the basic premise that in order to be successful, you and your group, known as an adventuring party, need to work together. But it doesn't stop there. It's not enough to know how to work together. You need to work together with people who are fundamentally different than you are. In D&D, a balanced party will have characters that play different roles and bring different skills to the table. It's important to have warriors, but you also need people who can cast spells or hide in the shadows or whatever else you need. Basically, a good party can deal with everything from magic to picking locks. This is very much like the Avengers. Every member of the team serves a different purpose. At a macro level, Iron Man is the brains. Cap is the moral center. Hulk is the muscle. Thor has the best hair and can hammer things, I guess. Black Widow brings all sorts of espionage to the table. And they all have a role. But no one Avenger is more important than the others. This is something we can all take to heart. And as I touched on, seeking these people out is one of the easiest ways to learn how to set ego aside. Here's an example from my own experience. Hear that on tomorrow's episode. You just listened to part one of the post titled Three Important Life Lessons from the Avengers by John Romanello of romanfitnesssystems.com. For the longest time, I always thought of myself as a type B personality laid back, easygoing, oh, whatever, I'll just go with the flow. Yeah, that all changed when I had to work in a group. This was probably most evident when I started my master's program. My entire two-year master's degree was all about working as a group. I basically worked with the same group for two years straight. And I quickly learned that I was not a type B person at all. I was very much a type A. I wanted to do everything. I felt I was the best writer in the group. I felt like I could collect the best data. I felt like I could design the best flyer, you name it. And so I wanted to do everything. It was difficult for me to let go and to trust and to know that everyone else had their set of skills and they want to shine too. It wasn't easy, but I eventually loosened the reins a little bit, let my team members take on tasks without my input and learn to keep quiet during the process. It wasn't easy but in fact, those two years changed me. By letting go, first of all, I was a lot less stressed. But second, my group turned in fantastic work, so much better than what I would have come up with on my own. If I hadn't let loose and let my group members do what they do best and take control over those things that they really were passionate about, we would never have been successful. Now, don't get me wrong, those two years changed me, but I still have that little voice in my head who wants to take control to this day. I work on it, It's not always easy, but I am grateful for those times when I do just let go. Now, before I go on, I'll remind you, like I mentioned at the top of the show, I answer your questions right here on the podcast every Friday in special Q&A episodes. You can ask me anything related to diet and nutrition, stress management, exercise, and lots more. Just call and leave a message with your question. The phone number is 61 I love ohd Or you can also send in an audio question through our site, oldpodcast.com. That's more friendly if you want to do multiple takes and hear yourself before sending it in. And by the way, if you send in a question, don't forget, you're entered into special raffles to win books every month. All right, that does it for today's episode. Hope you have a great rest of your Wednesday. I'll be back here for tomorrow's show where we'll finish up this post and where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show, and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one, literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together, we'll optimize your life. 
You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us and remember, your optimal life awaits.